Hello there. I thought I'd just do a short video in relation to the the door data that was uh, that's become an issue in relation to the whole of last year's trial, but came up in this this year's trial for the what turned out to be the retrial of the attempted murder baby K case, um, in which it was acknowledged by the CPS that the door data was incorrect there seems to be some confusion over this if I've if I've understood that the confusion correctly as it were that that some people are saying what happened is that um, it was a one-way door in relation to the baby K case and that the CPS had noted times in which people were entering and then transposed them into times in which people were leaving. Obviously, that's incorrect. And the door in question, and I've got, as you'll see, I've put the, the um, picture up of the unit. This is from a, this is an exhibit from a Cheshire Constabulary. And it was produced in... Um, the first of the first of April, twenty nineteen. You can see the units marked off in green, and the different doorways. There's little red lock signs for the different doorways. One of them is unlocked. That's the doorway to the stairs, um, where there's a CCTV. The other side of that unlocked door. Why it's unlocked, I don't know. And you can see the different elements there, and how how the the units fit together with the uh, with the other areas of the hospital. But what I'm a bit confused about is that some people are saying the door in which the evidence was called into question in terms of the timings due to the mistake by the CPS is this door which would be just below where number one, the number one in the in the image that I've got on the screen there and it's it's um, it's the door between the neonatal unit and the labour ward because what people are saying is that many people took their breaks in the resuscitation room in uh, just above where it says CLS theatre and if they took their breaks the nurses would have their breaks there so it goes into a corridor but then you're, in, you're also into the uh, the labour unit, the labour section there. Some people are saying that was a two-way swipe door. I had hitherto understood that it was a one-way swipe door in that you, you swipe to get into the neonatal unit but you didn't need to swipe out to get out. But other people are saying that was a two-way swipe. I don't know where that information's come from. They may be correct. Um, and as to whether which of the other the five doors in total here one of them is left unlocked the one going to the stairs are they are they different types of doors are, are they all um, one way swipe or are some of them two way swipes are they a mixture of them I think that's important to know if that door to the labour unit is the, the door in question in relation to the retrial of Baby K, is that what's happened, that they transposed the data based on um, assuming that people that, that people uh, coming into the unit were actually people going out, and that was the mistake that was made? Or did they do it two ways round, if it's a swipe in and a swipe out door? Other people on Twitter... I can't always remember who said what, but other people on Twitter who've worked in hospitals as nurses and in other capacities have mentioned that often, you know, you'd have situations where two people were coming along a corridor at the same time, and um, somebody with a swipe card, if they're getting in, if they're going into a, a place where the door's locked, they swipe in and they let the other person in. So somebody's card might not be registering that if if it's only one one of the two people's cards that have been used so that's an interesting point and there's another p potential for people to borrow other people's cards to swipe in and out 
what I've mentioned a few times on Twitter is, and other places is that I think you'd need to see all the all the door data. Um, I mean that that raises another question, which I'll go on to in a minute. But you need to see all the door to, door data for all five doors here, whether they're a one way swipe or a two way swipe, in order to see. Was there any data that was deliberately left out by the CPS and, and wasn't looked into and found by the defence team that was potentially exculpatory? Is that possible? We don't know. Um, I've sent a freedom of information request to the Countess of Chester Hospital in relation to and I say, you know, as I said, this map is from 2019. I'm assuming, or I would hope, I don't know why I'm assuming it, I would hope that this map represents what that unit and how the doors were set up in 2015 and 16. A lot can happen in three years. Because in a couple of years after this map was made or produced, so when it says produced, I don't know if that actually literally means it was produced from the from the original plan that relates to 2015 or 2016 or was it re produced in relation to what the what the state of, state of affairs was in the hospital in 2019 and ha had there been any changes in the inter interim period but I've, I've sent in this um, freedom of information request to the Countess of Chester Hospital in relation to these five doors simply to ask which doors are one-way swipe and are they you know swipe to get in and usually that would be the case if it's a separate unit they, you don't swipe to get out you swipe to get in if it's a one-way swipe so people are saying who've worked in hospitals but are any of them are any of them two-way swipe doors i think it's just as good as if we can get as much information as we can about this um i'm waiting to hear about that really so to go on to another matter here i'm just going to call up another picture so i did a uh, screenshot of a tweet by an account called lucy letby trials the trials of lucy letby which is um has been very good in terms of reporting all kinds of issues in relation to this story to this to the most recent trial and going into great detail so I'd follow that if, if I was you, if I was on Twitter. The Trials of Lucy Letby. I'll just read this out here. And it's got a big red circle and it says scoop. Scoop. There were three months of door swipe data missing from Lucy Letby's original trial. So that's the trial in 2023. Prosecutors failed to turn over door swipe data to the defence for the period between the 17th of July and the 22nd of October 2015. Neither the defence nor the prosecution disputed the fact that the three months of swipe data records in question were missing. It was an agreed fact at the trial and was also referenced by Judge Goss in his summing up of the case to the jury. The months for which swipe data was not produced at trial encompass the seven counts related to babies E through H. So that's E to H. The jury convicted Lucy Letby on four of those counts. The missing evidence, defence barrister Ben Myers told the jury, disadvantaged Lucy Letby as a defendant in key ways. It precluded Lucy Letby from proving where she was and wasn't on several of the occasions for which prosecutors accused her of wrongdoing. It prevented her defence from showing where other witnesses were at relevant times and it made it impossible for Lucy Letby to refute several of the prosecution's accusations that she had lied about her whereabouts or falsified her notes. And it says at the bottom, all credit due to, and there's another account, which is also a very good account on Twitter or X, 
at Rex versus Lucy Letby, at Rex versus Lucy Letby, who sent me a valuable tip. I mention them here with permission. So that's a very interesting tweet regarding this missing door swipe data over a very important section of time there. And I I noticed in reply to this, let's have a, a sip of coffee. I noticed in reply to this that the the final date, the final day of the missing door swipe data, 22nd of October 2015, is exactly one day before the sad death of child I, which happens on the 23rd of October 2015. I'm not sure what we can infer from that, but it just seems perhaps it's a coincidence, perhaps it's not, perhaps it means something. Now, whether this data does exist somewhere, um, I saw a tweet today in which somebody said that they'd read somewhere that the hospital didn't keep or didn't record or didn't keep that data, i.e. it's not, it can't be gotten anymore, it, it, it doesn't exist anymore. Now, why would that have happened? Is it an accident? Is it deliberate? If that is the case, is that the case? Is the data still available? Um, it would seem that the prosecution is stating that they've not had sight of that data and yet they're making all sorts of presumptions in relations to the cases of babies E through H, as the Trials of Lucy Letby account says here, in which they're using timings about where Lucy's supposed to be and where other people are supposed to be or, or, or supposed to not be, and yet there isn't any door data to back it up. And just to go over an earlier point, um, the door data re is really about those door swipe cards, isn't it? And it's, it's not 100% reliable to say... You could have a bit of data saying a, a card with somebody's name on uh, has gone in or gone out of a certain door, but it might not necessarily be the person. We can only say with any certainty that it's the card that has done that, that has then been recorded. Somebody else might have borrowed the card... Other people have, have um, added further questions into this matter in terms of what about other people that need to come on to that unit, be they potentially admin, be they uh, cleaners of different kinds, um, be they other people to check equipment, trade to people of different kinds in, in, in whatever section. How does, how does that work? And as you'll see from the map before, uh, that I put on there, there's a section for um, parents' accommodation, so obviously parents would be coming coming in and out as well. Uh, would they be given temporary cards? I was told by someone that on the other side of the locked, what would it be a locked door between the neonatal unit and the parents' accommodation, there would be a a button that you'd press and it would, it would ring a bell and then somebody would let them in but as opposed to them having a card to come in so there's a lot of gathering information about this um, as Peter Hitchens has inferred on Twitter recently the fact that it has been acknowledged by the CPS that it, um, that, the C, that the door data was in quotes put made correct in the retrial of, of the attempted murder of baby K case tried this year you can that you can safely infer from that that it hadn't been corrected retrospectively or wasn't corrected retrospectively or at sorry wasn't corrected at the time in terms of the very lengthy trial last year um so there's a lot, there's, that, that this issue is going to run and run. And of course, David Davis has explicitly asked um, the CPS to, to assure him that the, the door data, whether a miss, <laughs> here's the difficulty now, you know, that the missing elements of it or what door data was used last year was correct in the, in the trial. Personally, I wouldn't trust the CPS to 
to see it as in their interest to, to be honest about it unfortunately but um, I think it needs as and when and if and uh, there's going to be a retrial as opposed to just squ quashing the verdicts I think you simply need a different defence team to have all that data there and just go over all of it from from the beginning to the end and not rely on the CPS's version of the data that they collected um, and this missing period of data a very salient time 17th of July to the 22nd of October 2015 it does trouble me I, I know there are co coincidences but the fact that uh, the sad death of baby I child I is on the 23rd of October the very day after this missing swatch of data I mean either it's missing or it was it was simply never saved and then it, it begs the question or you'd, you'd like to ask the question well why why was it not saved why was that section not saved is it just happenstance or is there is there more to it either way if the prosecution are relying so much on door data and yet you can have a, a large section in which many of the charges and the indictment are implicated by this missing section of data I think that's a very serious matter as well as the outstanding issue as to what CPS so-called evidence was potentially incorrect in the first trial in terms of these uh, these timings for, for some of the other um, cases on the indictment so I'll leave it there thank you very much for listening and all the best bye bye hello there just a very short addendum to that video there Around 6 minutes 30, I mentioned that a lot can change in a few years um, in this hospital setting. And when, I, when I'm talking about the date of the map that's being used here as being 2019, and it's in relation to events that happened in 2015 stroke 2016, I didn't finish off my point. I went on to another point. But what I wanted to continue saying was that by 2021, so a couple of years after that uh, diagram was produced, whatever date it was actually based on, as it were, um, that unit, all the old rooms there, were no longer being used as neonatal rooms. And we know that from the video that's available, which is dated September 2021, in which all those old rooms are all, they look like they're kind of, expression that comes to mind is like they're mothballed, they're kind of, they're not being used uh, because what's happened in the intervening period between 2019 or 2021 or at some point in that intervening period between when they were being used is that other rooms were built on, it was extended, I believe the building was extended and that new rooms were were being used as the the new level one neonatal units and those all those old rooms were sort of sort of either empty or sort of used for storage and you can see that in the video in 2021 what the current status is of those spaces those rooms i don't know um and um the longer term plan well the plan for 2025 is to have a new completely new uh completely new units uh, a mother and child unit which is um you know they spent a lot of money on and that's due to be opening in 2025 and I think on a different slightly different part of the hospital site so I just wanted to add that um, in terms of what can change over a short period of time but you know what uh, it's it just in relation to the actual details about which doors were where and when but we've obviously got this ongoing issue about door data what what if any of it can be relied upon in terms of what the cps produced as part of its prosecution case and what indeed can any of it be relied upon in terms of what was given to the cps and whether certain we know this is so-called missing period but 
Are there, is there other data out there that is not so much missing, it just simply wasn't used by the CPS for the prosecution case and, nor, and perhaps nor was it looked at or looked into by the defence team in terms of potential exculpatory evidence? If that is the case, and it's just a supposition at the moment, it's, it would be on the same basis, the same modus operandi as what they did with all the other deaths and crashes on that unit over those full two years. In other words, they, they only picked certain of them to decide to show the jury about um, because they'd uh, reframed them as crimes, you see, but they'd left all these other ones out and the all these other deaths and crashes and, we, and the jury didn't get to know about any of those in order to contextualise what they were seeing in the court. So that's another that's another huge issue. Anyway, I thought I'd add this addendum for clarity because I sometimes start on a little path of trying to make a point and then I, I veer off it. Perhaps perhaps I should write it all down, but might lose some spontaneity that way. And um, sometimes things come when you're doing it on the hoof in, in a way that they don't if you've got it too planned out, I think. But thanks very much for listening and uh, best wishes. Thank you. Bye bye.